In this video we can look at some harder applications of using this formula uh, for the gradient f of x equals uh, ax to the n gives a gradient functional derivative of a n x to the n minus 1. Look at the previous video if you're not sure how that works, but I'm going to assume you're reasonably happy if I give you something like f of x equals 3x cubed plus 7x, that you would tell me that the derivative is 9x squared plus 7. If not, go back to that previous video. And the examples in this video are, I've said, the harder versions. In a way, they're also sort of traps to avoid in differentiation, um, sort of questions that people often uh, get wrong. Um, and here's the first one, 2x plus 7 times 3x plus 1. So let me tell you the common mistake first, which is to say, oh, OK, well, 2x differentiates to 2, 7 goes to 0, 3 goes to 3, 1 goes to 0. So this is just 2 times 3, which is which is 6. OK, so uh, now that's not correct. We haven't got any rule that says if I take two functions multiplied together that their derivative will be those things multiplied together. So just because, you know, it is the case that when I differentiate, uh, if I had f of x equals 2x plus 7, that the derivative is 2. And if I have g of x equals 3x plus 1, then the derivative of that is 3. But that doesn't mean that the derivative of this is 2 times 3. Okay. Um, in fact, you know, we know that can't be the case because we know if we differentiate x, we get 1. And if I differentiate x I get 1, but if I multiply them together, if I get x squared, I differentiate it, I get 2x, and that's not 1 times 1. So there's really no rule uh, that makes that work. This only applies when we've got a sum of terms that are of this form all added together. So what we need to do for something like this is to multiply out the brackets, and we'll get 2x times 3x is 6x squared, plus 2x, plus 7 times 3x is 21x, plus 1 times 7 is 7, so we've got 6x squared plus 23x plus 7. And now we've written it as a sum of terms uh, of this form. So we can apply the rule for differentiation and get 2 times 6 is 12x to the 1, which I can just write as 12x. I don't need to write x to the 1, uh, plus 23. And the 7 differentiates to 0. So the answer here is actually 12x plus 23. And that would apply if we had uh, you know, other terms inside the brackets here, or if I had three brackets, I'd have to multiply them all out first and then differentiate them. There is something called the product rule, which will come on to later in the course, which would allow you to differentiate a product of things using a, a formula, but it's not just as simple as multiplying the derivatives together. It's something more complex than that. Okay, So for now, multiply it out, differentiate term by term, this is much quicker than using the product rule anyway, so this is the best way to do these examples. Here's another one. What if we've got 3x plus 7 divided by x squared? Again, common mistake here is to say, well, why don't I just differentiate the top and differentiate the bottom? And we have 3 is the derivative of the top, and 2x is the derivative of the bottom. And that is incorrect. Okay, You cannot do that. Uh, there's no rule that says if you have a quotient of functions that the derivative is just the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. There is a formula, but it's much more complicated, and we'll come to it later. So how can we deal with these ones uh, without needing that? Well, something like this, because it's just a single term with you know x or x squared or x cubed or something like that on the bottom, we can just split this fraction up. So this is the same as 3x over x squared plus 7 over x squared by what you know about algebraic fractions. And then we could cancel a factor of x in this fraction and get 3 over x plus 7 over x squared. And now these are uh, 3x to the minus 1 and 7x to the minus 2, respectively. So this is now in a form that we can differentiate. It's a sum of the sorts of terms that we're interested in. So, uh, I mean, for this rule to apply. Uh, so just like the ones we've done before now. So it's minus 3x to the minus 2 and minus 14x to the minus 3. And if you wanted to, you could write that back in uh, the form of the algebraic fractions like this. And I suppose if you want to be really fancy, you could put it back in the form of the questions we started off and say oh, this is minus 3x over x cubed, minus 14 over x cubed. So we've ended up here with minus 3x minus 14 all over x cubed. Um, so as you can see it's not just the derivative of this divided by the derivative of this, it's something much more complicated going on, uh, but that is the answer. 
Okay, let's look at a couple more of these. As you can probably tell from some of these, a lot of the real, you know, getting really good at these things is actually being good with the indices part and multiplying out and sorting out the indices. So, um, if you haven't mastered that, I suggest you go back and, and look at some stuff on indices. Um, so this is kind of the same idea, but different and you know, a little bit harder with the indices. So I've got root x plus 7 times 2x plus 3. As in the first example, we're going to need to multiply this all out. So 2x times root x, uh, and we'll have 3 times root x, and we'll have 2x times 7, which is 14x, and we'll have 21. And I can write these in index form. So x times root x, that's x to the 1 times x to the half, so that's x to the 1 and a half. Uh, and I'm going to write 1 and a half as 3 over 2. X, root x is x to the 1 half, 14x and 21, we can just leave as they are. Now, uh, I want to differentiate this, so we'll have to apply the rule, as before it's now just a sum of terms that we can differentiate, so 3 over 2 times 2, that gives us 3 uh, times x to the 1 half, then I get uh, 3 times 1 half is 3 over 2, uh, x to the minus 1 half, then we have plus 14 here, and the 21 differentiates to give 0, so uh, that's that, and again we could if we wanted to write this uh, using indices uh, as 3 root x plus um, 3 divided by 2 times the square root of x plus 14, and there we go, that's our final answer. Either of these two I think will be fine. So one last example, let's have got y equals all of this. Uh, so remember, just the same notation here, we can have y instead of f of x, and then we'd have dy by dx instead of uh, f prime of x. Now, the function here, again, it's a bit like the second example we did, got different uh, two fractions, we've got a fraction here, but I can split it into two, so I could say it's x cubed over root x, and then I've also got here, now, uh, you know, I don't like these fractions inside fractions, I'm just going to start, I'm just going to write 1 over x as x to the minus 1, divided by the square root of x. Now, um, well, we've got x cubed over x to the half, and we've got x to the minus 1 divided by x to the half, and the rules of indices say that when I divide, um, you know, so if I have x to the a divided by x to the b, that's x to the a minus b, so I need to do 3 minus a half, that gives us 5 over 2, or 2 and a half, that's right, that's 5 over 2, and here I get minus 1 minus a half, so that's minus 1 and a half, so that's x to the minus 3 over 2. So differentiating this, we get dy by dx is equal to, now applying this rule, uh, 5 over 2, x to the 3 over 2, which is 2 and a half minus 1 is 1 and a half, plus well, minus 3 over 2, so actually this is going to be minus x to the minus 3 over 2 minus 1, so that's minus 5 over 2. And there we are. So, again, if you wanted to, you could put that back in terms of certs, but I'll just leave it there. So be careful with these things, you know, make sure, uh, as always, you're only applying rules that you are allowed to apply, so don't assume you can just differentiate a product or a quotient, you know, easily. Um, but we can, uh, in a lot of cases, just rewrite the function that we're looking at as a linear combination of these sorts of functions and differentiate it in that way.